I am standing in a sanctuary that was built. Um, it was actually finished in May of 2022. But it started way back in 2020. So it took two years to build. And it took five years to save, dream, and plan. That's one of our Furball Juniors, Hunter. So you'll find if you come here and you have a churu, you'll have lots of friends. Are you able to watch this? Are you able to watch? Good. <clears throat> yep. Hi, Roy Powell. I was petting your namesake. namesake. He absolutely loves to be petted. He's just skittish at first. Hi, Jan. So looking around this building, it took a lot of planning, um, a lot of heartache, a lot of back break. Um, so I will say that in December of 2016 is when we got our 501c3 because we had, we started taking in cats that we thought our goal was going to be to take in cats that had inappropriate urination. So Betsy right there came up with the name. We were sitting at the table, throwing, tossing names around, and Betsy had a couple. I just started Sylvia, so don't worry. We felt like everything we were coming up with was taken. Yeah. We had, we had so many names, but they were all having to do with cats, but then we'd realized that they were already taken, so. I don't know, it just When she said furball, <laughs> yeah, I laughed and I knew it was, the, I'm like, oh my God, Betsy, that was, that was bingo, that was it. So then we were taking cats from like Last Hope, um, Kitten's Cradle. We thought that maybe our niche would be cats that were not adoptable due to inappropriate urination. I had fostered for a group called Last Hope and when we would get a non-adoptable cat that, because they sprayed, we would put it on Bev Orr's, um, her son had a horse farm. So that's where I got this idea. We bought this property because we had, uh, my husband had purchased a restaurant in um, Fairbolt and we were looking for homes and somebody sent this property as a joke. And my husband likes trucks, plow trucks in supplies. And I, I remember I was sitting in, the, in that fi old garage and I was looking at the windows. And that's what made me think, oh, I could take some PCATs. And that's basically how it started. And there was, um, four board members, Nancy, Betsy, me, and Kathy. And um, that's how we started in a garage. We were small. We were very small. And then <clears throat> I knew there was a feral cat problem in Fairbolt. And so I decided to go sit in and listen and find out what are the problems of these cats. And that's where I met, da -da -da -da. <laughs> there's Jessica and Jovi. And you know, Jovi was what, eight? Seven or eight? Six. Six? I'll never forget her singing. Not even shy. She was not shy. It was, yes, oh my gosh. It was amazing. Jovi, we were only six, and then she turned seven in August. Yeah. Um, yep, and so, you know, we were taking in cats. Um, and quickly, we started realizing that there's a lot of cats in need from other rescues. So then we got joined forces with the Humane Society and that's when our eyes were opened. Uh, we were getting cats in every week. Yeah. Every week they were on the, it was called the euthanasia list, but they have changed it to the rescue list. Um, it was the saddest story. Yeah, most of them were people that um, got rid of their cats. You know, they brought them to the Humane Society and you know what, I know there's a reason to have to surrender a cat to the Humane Society, but I think people abuse that. I think they get a cat, they start having kids, and nah, let's just get rid of our cat. Because I would say 85% of the cats that we took from the Humane Society were adopted. We, yeah, yeah, we adopted them out. Yep. And that's what got me and Betsy and Nancy and Kathy and Jessica. And then we um, also got another board member um, by the name Kathy also. So now we're starting to grow in volunteers in cats or people that loved had a passion for cats so now we're starting to see that um, cats in cages don't do well 
And we totally understand rescues that, use, that utilize cages. We are not knocking any rescue that uses cages. We are knocking cages that are confined. They're small spaces. They're very stressed where they hear dogs barking. It's black, it's cold. And how some of the cats we took from AHS had cage rage from being in yep. cages for so long and they were just broken down and yeah. sad. And so you get them into our atmosphere and all of a sudden we start to see a beautiful flowering cat and we adopt them out. So, and I need to retract because humane societies are phenomenal because without them, these cats would be dumped outside. They'd freeze to death. They would starve to death. I 100% understand why cages have to be utilized. I guess I just wish that maybe um, they can start um, after the cats are vetted, maybe have rooms instead of cages, you know. And, and granted, a lot of friendly cats don't get along with other cats, which is why our mission is for feral cats. Um, or I don't, I, don't know, I, I don't know what the exact solution would be, but all I know is 85% of the cats that we took out from there, we were able to adopt out and we don't fault the Humane Society, we fault the people that drop their cats off. They let their, they let their, their pet down. So now we're taking in cats and we're getting more and more and pretty soon we have 50 or 60 and, and that's when I realized that we can't be in this garage forever. We're gonna have to get, we're gonna have to build a, a building. So we, we set our sights on the machine shed, which is an already constructed building so we were gonna retrofit into that building. And so we, we paid $5,000 for an architect to, to drop plans to, to retrofit that machine shed. Um, if you go on our website, I think we still have videos that show that. I'm sure we do. Okay. And um, so you can, get a, do, you can get a lot of information by going on our website and looking at our old videos. Same with Facebook, you know, scroll, scroll. And, um, um, so I lose my point of thought. Retrofitting the machine shed. So okay, <clears throat> so we um, so we paid down, paid the five thousand dollars, and we were kind of waiting and waiting and and so over the course of the winter, my husband's like Julie, uh, I think you're going to need your own building, and I liked that. Like secretly, I was wishing he'd give me that whole building, but he wouldn't give me that whole building. <laughs> So when he said, Julie, I think you need your own building, I was like, yay. So you know what my husband and I did? We went to the bank and we applied for a line of credit because if I was gonna build this thing, I wanted to build it right. I knew being in that, in that garage that heated floors would be something we wanted. And so now that's where we started our building fund. And so, so um, 2020 is when I had to write a check out for $25,000. That basically wiped out our building fund. That was the scariest check yeah. ever to write out to the Amish. <clears throat> and then, um, so they put the footings in and we were dreaming and praying. And so you'll see um, my video from 2019 at this day, I thought we were moving into the machine shed. And so I kept saying, we're gonna be in it next, next year. 2020 is the year, um, but 2020, Fall was the year that they put the footings in. And um, if you guys have any questions, ask them. But um, so we're taking in cats and nobody really knew us. And um, we do an occasional live. Yeah. It's mainly our, our friends and fellow rescue. Friends. I don't even think we did lives. I, I was too we chicken had, to do lives. We, we did videos. Few, did we? Well, we did, I did a few lives. Yeah, I think Betsy did. I was too chicken. I hated lives. I did not ever want to do a live. I would do videos and talk, but I didn't want to do lives. I guess my big thing is, is uh, I um, didn't ever want my rescue to be about people. I, I feel some rescues can um, get their their roads going the wrong way where they start to feel like there's somebody special. And, and as I have spoken in, in my past, I have a family member that is battling addiction. And I knew that God placed this sanctuary in my lap to help me deal with it and to keep my mind occupied. And for the record, my family member just celebrated one year sober. Yay! So happy about that one year, doing very well. So anyways, um, so that's my fear. And I always tell new volunteers, I share my story. And 
Um, it's about teamwork. It's about the cats. It is not about any people. Even though we're breaking our backs every day, it's truly for these cats. So, um, so, so we're taking in cats and we're not getting any progress. We're getting frustrated because where's the builders? Where's the Amish? And, you know, so last year in August, um, you know, we had the footings up and I think they had part of the shell up so you could see like the wood, you could see like the skeleton of the, of the building. And that was exciting. And so, you know, so we kept looking out our window, go back to our reels and our videos in 2021. We dreamt, we kept looking at that building and dreaming and when will we be in there? The Amish were phenomenal. I love them. I absolutely love their work ethic. So, but here's the deal. This is what I've learned. And granted, I'm, I'm level 5.4. Things happen for a reason. Things happen when they're supposed to happen. You can't push something good. And I got frustrated in August because my husband, we were sitting down in the living room, <clears throat> chit-chatting. And Tony said, Julie, you're not getting into, this, into the new sanctuary this fall. Because we were banking on October. We were. And here it's Octo August, and I'm like. We kind of had an idea that it wasn't yep. going to happen. But, and, but I, was, I, wasn't, I wasn't entertaining that. In my mind, I'm getting this done. Because I'm a doer. I'm going to make sure. And I was probably talking about it. And he's like, Julie, you're not getting in. And I had a hissy fit. I had a meltdown. I, like, cried. And I wanted to quit. And I sent the board members a message. If I don't get, if I can't get away, I'm quitting. I'm dissolving. We'll find another rescue. We'll find somebody else to take it over. Blah, blah, blah. It, was, fit. it was a scary, it was a scary message to get. Yeah. And my, my heart dropped because this was our passion. This has our, been our baby. Yep. And I didn't want it to go. So ups and downs, ups and downs, all this hard work. You're in a garage. Me and Betsy and the other board members knew how many cats we had. Uh, nobody knew us unless they wanted to give us a cat. Right. You know, we didn't have a lot of donators. We, had, we relied on family and friends. Um, and we do all these little fundraisers, Easter egg parties, and you know, everything to try to save up for this new building. And here my dreams were crushed. And so the board members um, consulted with my husband and I got to go to Florida for a whole month in November. And something huge happened then. So in October, I'm ready to go to Florida and my niece says, Aunt Julie, uh, have you ever done a reel before? I'm like, what's a reel? And yes, you can see Isabel on the wheel. We'll watch Isabel as I talk. Okay. Aunt Julie, uh, what, um, you need to do a reel. So she showed me how to do a reel and I did the first one on Anita. And it was, isn't she lovely? And I was like, oh, I love music because we can never play music. We get in trouble for copyright. So I did the... I did that um, reel and didn't really think nothing of it, you know, and I'm probably telling Betsy and those guys, hey, let's do reels, but we didn't really think nothing of it because we're so busy in that garage. And we were thinking it was just fun to do. Yeah. It was just fun. Yep. And you know what? We were in a garage. It was so hard cleaning and making sure it didn't stink and making sure the cats had everything they needed. So all of a sudden, um, I did a reel, and it's called uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Hannah, do you remember when we did that reel, Don't Worry, Be Happy? Okay, so Hannah was behind me, and I got this, yes, so Hannah was behind me trying to make the cats move their heads in sync to, don't worry, be happy now. So Hannah's behind me, okay, and I, and Janice just shared this reel, like, two weeks ago. <clears throat> All of a sudden, we start the song, you know, do, 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 and the stinking cats weren't following Hannah's toy. <laughs> so I started to pan, so what I did was I panned like this. I moved like this, and it's don't worry, be happy. And at that ending part, my friend Leah, who was scooping, had just came up the steps with her big old bag of poop. Yeah, and I sad. had never put a person on our Facebook page before until Leah came up the stairs with the bag of poop. And I zoomed in, telling myself, I'm not posting this, it's no problem. And we laughed, like I cried when I played it back. I, me and Hannah, died laughing. So then we showed Leah and she thought it was funny too. And so I thought, I'm going to post it, even though it's got a face in it. That sucker went viral. <laughs> like, funny. so, so now I'm, I'm flying to Florida and I'm so glad that Betsy and all those guys have to scoop poop and take care of the cats. And I'm just going to bake in the sun. Bake in the sun. 
And I fly into Florida and, I'll, and let me tell you, the night before I went to Florida, this was, uh, it probably was like November 3rd or 4th. I said, hey guys, I don't know what's going on, but we have almost 10,000 followers. So send me some videos and I'll make reels. So I fly into Florida and um, two nights go by and my phone was blowing up with notifications. And it was good, but it was bad. It was good, it was going viral, but I wasn't used to such nasty, despicable, mean comments. Because why? Because I didn't label my video. I didn't know I had to. I didn't know that I had to hashtag the poop out of everything. I had to really say, this is a cat sanctuary, spay and neuter. You know, it was, it was the same, same, same comments we still get, but it was a thousand percent worse. And it like, it wrecked my vacation actually. I had to ask for more admin to be on Facebook to catch those comments, to comment, and I spent four weeks defending myself. <clears throat> and, but you know, we go through all these tough times to make you stronger and make you wiser. And I learned a huge lesson that I have to dumb it down and not to be rude to the followers, but I have to really pretend like my videos are going to people that they don't know a thing about cats. Um, and they don't know a thing about rescue because if you don't know what it's like to rescue cats, it's really hard to gauge. Um, and so by the time February came around, you know, we're all doing reels and, um, uh, well, I should, I should go back because I left right, right after Thanksgiving. And I remember I, um, now people are starting to send us packages because they're starting to notice that we're Furball Farm Pet Sanctuary, we're a sanctuary for feral cats, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I, uh, I, people kept asking about a Chewy wish list, and I'm on my phone, too lazy to get up on the computer, so I'm texting Chris. Chris, are you talking about me? I always talk about you, Chris. <laughs> How do we do a wish list? How do we get a Chewy wish list? And so I called them on, it was probably Wednesday before, um, Wednesday or Thursday, I bet it was Wednesday before Black Friday. I said, I can't, how do I get a wish list for my Furball Farm Pet Sanctuary? And the guy said, you have to go on the computer. So I got my butt up, walked over to the computer, did it, and I thought, hmm, I wonder what our Facebook page looks like on a computer. So I looked. That is where I saw the most important notification that changed Furball Farm Pet Sanctuary. It was a message from Facebook that said, we will now begin to pay you for making your reels a penny per view. And what that did for us was huge. huge. It was It was huge. <laughs> Um, so now we're, you know, making reels and, and learning that we have to really explain what we're doing. And remember, we were in a, a garage that did not look clean. I go back to those videos. I'm proud of what we did, but it was a garage. It was a garage, but it was clean. Yep, it was clean, but it didn't look clean, but it was clean, but it was a garage. It was a garage that was used for oil changes and working on cars and... We had to make it work and fit for our need. And so it wasn't clean to the eye, but it was, it was clean and sanitized. Yeah, I, I remember I do a reel of cats eating soup and people would focus on the walls behind the soup. You know, yeah. it's just like, so now I, I can't help it when I'm gonna make a video or, video or a reel, I have to think about what is somebody gonna complain about? Um, just like today, I knew somebody would complain about the music being too loud. I was standing right underneath those two speakers. And um, the cats don't mind the music. You know what? It helps us. We love to play music and sing while we clean. And the cats, they don't appear to be stressful. If they don't like it, they'll go out on the catio. But our, our cats are used to it. I, I feel like we've been doing this for six years. We know if our cats are stressed, we love these cats. I mean, we have sacrificed our lives for these cats. Why would we you know, enjoy stressing these cats out. So now let's go back to um, the, um, the reels. We're making a lot of reels. And now that we're getting to be more known, we're also getting more pleas of cats with inappropriate urination. And then we're learning about the cats freezing to death outside. And that's when we as a board had to make a decision about our mission statement. And we can't save the world, so we made the decision as a group that we're gonna try to change our mission to more feral cats, you know, cats from animal control that were live trapped outside. 
Um, and so that's where we changed them. And I know I talked about Sissy. That was July of 2020. Yeah, July of 2020, wasn't it? 2020. Yep. Yes, because it was just a year ago. 22? It was 20. Okay, it was 2020. Um, we took in a cat named Sissy. She was black. Um, black and white. I think she had white. Um, I'll, so if you go on to Furball Farm, or if you go on to Facebook, go in the search bar and type out Furball Farm Sissy, S-I-S-S-Y, so you can see her. She was the very last pea cat that we took ever. And she was a cat that I made the um, owner. She, was, she did rescue herself, but she was moving and selling the house, and Sissy was a pea cat. And I made her log into PetCube, and I made her look at all our videos, and I said, can your cat live with over 100 cats? She said, yeah, she's got lots of cats, lots of dogs. And I understood, and she was a rescuer, and I always like to help fellow rescuers. So we took Sissy in, and long story short, we couldn't make her happy. She was homesick. She missed her home. We tried to. We brought her into the into the farmhouse so where it was more of a home. It. She, we couldn't make her happy. She developed a fatty liver. I had to call her owner. We both cried. And we 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 put Sissy to sleep. It was and sad. yep. And on the way to the vet, I told her. And here I get emotional again. Sissy, I will never do this again to another cat. So, darn it. Ah. So. I do not take in your PCATs. If you have a PCAT, if you can't solve your own problem, put your PCAT to sleep and we will save the cats that are gonna freeze to death outside. So we had to make a decision and it's a difficult decision because we get calls all the time. My cat is peeing on the couch. Did you take it to a vet? Three fourths of the time, they don't take it to a vet. So I just, so anyways, all right, now. It's not always, it's not always a behavior, it can be has something wrong with it and the vet it should be the first place you start yep yep and for the record for the record all of our cats that we took in the first two years that were we call we lovingly call them pea cats because they urinate inappropriately all of them were screened for medical conditions all of them they had to be medically cleared so um so now we're just saving money and we're making reels and Facebook started paying us and it was shocking. Yeah, it was really it was good. Wonderfully you know, shocking. and so we're what we're waiting for the Amish to come. Come on. It's 20. It's 2021. Come on. It's Christmas. Come on. When are they coming back? They were supposed to come back in October and we couldn't get a hold of them because they're Amish and they don't have cell phones. And but now January, February, March, we're getting paid from Facebook reels and I'll never forget Janice beat me to the sanctuary and she sent me a, a text. The Amish are here. And we're, yeah, I personally have a pea cat, Vicky. I actually have two now. My best friend and Kit Kat. I clean it up. I deal with it because I love them. So Janice sent, sends me a text that the Amish are here. Oh my God, talk about joy. So I, I get there and, and Alan comes walking out with his hat and I could tell he was like, 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 he, to me, he's like a dog with his tail between his legs. Like, sorry, Julie, I know we're like six months late, but <laughs> yeah. I said, Alan, oh my gosh, Alan, do you know that things happen for a reason? He goes, yes, ma'am. Alan, do you believe in God? Yes, ma'am. Alan, do you believe that things happen for a reason? Yes, ma'am. Well, I get to tell you this, and I took him inside the shell um, that were just skeletons, and I showed him the three tiny windows that were here. I said, Alan, I want you to take them out, and I want six big windows in the sanctuary. Really? Yeah. And then, um, and then we've added more windows on the other side over here. I hate to pan too much, um, but we added windows. Um, I think we added two in the isolation in this isolation room back there. But anyhow, so that was like in March. Okay. So they're building away, and they're building away, and now it's. It's April, and they're getting ready to um, put the walls up. And I, once again, saw that we got paid from Facebook. And people are starting to know us and, and believe in us and see that we're for the cats. And we're starting to get donations without even having to ask. Yeah, um, it's wonderful. Yep. It still is wonderful. It has been one full year that we have not had to go out and buy a thing for these cats. But I will tell you, today I went and bought three gallons of bleach. Yeah. So... First time in a long time, but I'm not, you know what? We get really good donations. But you know what? Two 
bottles of bleach came today. Oh my gosh. One of our visitors. So oh. things happen for a reason. Oh, uh, things happen for a reason. So, so now I come out here because he's ready to put the tin up. See the tin on the walls up there? That's what our walls were only going to be because we couldn't afford to do anything but the tin and the three windows. Well, I already changed the three windows to six. So I walk in here and, um, oh, Alan, Alan um, asked to see me. One of the workers came and said, Julie, Alan wants to see you. So he took me into the bathroom and he's like, well, we got all these pipes and we got to cut around the pipes and it's going to be hard with the tin. How about if we put some waterproof panels? I don't know what you call it. And when he said waterproof, I was like, oh my gosh. Well, then you said vinyl and it was like. Yeah, I think it is vinyl. And I was like, really? My bathroom will be waterproof? He goes, yeah. Well, can we do the isolation rooms? Because remember, it was one big long area and they were just starting to frame. He goes, yeah, yes, ma'am, we can do the isolation rooms. Well, could you do the kitchen? <laughs> and so we walk into the kitchen and he's looking. And he goes, yes, ma'am, we can do the kitchen. And then I walked out in this big area. Well, how about the sanctuary? So initially we were going to do four feet high all the way around because you know cats spray generally besides unless you're unless you're ash ash can spray like eight feet <laughs> so we were going to do paneling all the way around four feet okay so i go back into the kitchen and i'm talking to whoever's making soup and and you, i you put a you you messaged all of us yep i know i sent a message to the board members and i got to thinking wouldn't it be nice to have like eight feet instead of four feet? Because we're going to put ledges and stuff up. So I come up to Alan, and, I'm, and I don't remember the exact figure, but it really wasn't a lot. I said, Alan, how much is it, to, how much is it per panel? And I thought it was like, God, like $40 a panel. Well, how many panels would it take to fully do all rooms with eight feet? And I think he told me it would be like, 25 panels or something. But anyways, long story short, it really wasn't out of our budget because of the donations we'd been getting. And that's when, so that's when we said, hey, Alan, we want eight feet up. I heard super chats aren't good. Somebody asked, how come you don't have a super chat? I heard super chats, I guess something about the money doesn't go to us. I don't really remember. Um, so anyways, that's basically how we got this upgrade. And then we got contacted by Girl Scouts, but they're Boy Scouts, but they're girls, and I can't remember the name. Her name is Katrina. They needed a project for their Eagle Scout, and that's when they did our catio. And, and you know, Betsy and all of us look back to the days that we were in the garage, and if we weren't in that garage for five years, I don't think we would have a clear understanding and appreciation. Yeah, an appreciation of, of what we should do. Uh, for instance, air exchange, you know, we wanted to put one in, but we didn't, it wasn't in the budget while we were building, but we were able to do it after we were done building. But as far as the sealed concrete floor, the waterproof walls, litter boxes up, ledges, fans, fan, ceiling fans, ceiling fans we, um, a kitchen with two windows. And I complained about making soup in the farmhouse kitchen and I couldn't see the cats. That's where that came from. I hated going to make soup because I wasn't with the sanctuary cats. And so I always felt like when I'm making, um, when I'm making soup, I never knew what was going on in the sanctuary. We'll have to try a super chat one time, Sylvia. We'll try that. So I guess when um, people um, will call us, they'll message us, how did you start? We started small in a garage and you have to you have to do the work to get the experience to know exactly what you want, like these toddler beds. It took us three years to figure out toddler beds. Wasn't yeah, it? About three it years? We had couches. We thought oh. we could make it be a home. We had couches we and rugs. We tried everything to make it very homey for these cats. We had carpeted area rugs. We had um, couches. We had a day bed that you know Julie would stay on if she had to stay overnight at the sanctuary. Um, and we tried to make these cats feel like they were in a home, but a lot of them wanted to go into the couch or pee on the couch or pee on the carpet or what have you. And so through trial and error, we took some of the things and got rid of them and brought other things in. And the toddler beds were just a 
kind of a novel idea and it was it was one that worked so yep and you'll notice we don't have window furnishings and i'll tell you a little story about mr cougar we had an old cat named cougar and when we we got him from the humane society ahs and i'll never forget we had um, a window above the um the desk area that faced the backyard and i'm not a i'm bad at decor but i found these clearance curtains and i thought let's put some curtains up and you know so these cats feel like they're in a regular home i stinking put them up and i am not susie homemaker and i remember i walked back to take a, a, a video of it and all of a sudden i saw cougar turn around and spray my brand new curtains those suckers came right down so we never had curtains again so got rid of the carpet got rid of the curtains got rid of the couches eventually got rid of anything that would hold any odor or would could could potentially stay dirty yep and so um when we so when i first started i had to have a kennel license and i had my 501c3 nonprofit status and um all the info to get your 501c3 that's all on petfinder.org. You can find almost everything online. You know, how do I get my kennel license and put your state? Um, I also learned um, that I had to get a conditional use permit through the county, which I didn't know. So I was a year and a half, two years old, and all of a sudden the county came and visited me. And so that was something that I had to go through. <clears throat> and then I had to um, submit the plans for our new building. So I actually had to fill out that conditional use permit twice. And we didn't have the money at the time that I was filling out the conditional use permit. And uh, cause I saw that somebody asked about, you know, why don't we have a lot of washers and dryers, you know, a bigger laundry room. Well, when, when we decided to build this, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, we were your struggling rescue. And matter of fact, we had no income cause we took in cats that aren't adoptable. So where's our income? Isn't that fun to watch? So we weren't your regular rescue that's Grant, by the way. He's feeling real frisky. He's starting to party already. Grant, the party's not started yet. And if you're watching this um, as a video and not a live, tonight is New Year's Eve. So it's 2022 and it's New Year's Eve. So we could only build what we could afford and this size building is what we could afford. Um, and I planned on using our, our line of credit we couldn't build a bigger building. So the laundry room, bathroom was the biggest that we could build. And it's not big enough for a commercial washer dryer. You know what, but we figure things out. We're doers. You know, we make lemons out of lemonade. That's been our motto. We take a lot of cats that the public views as lemons and we realize that they are delicious lemonade. Lemontinis. Yes, lemontinis. <laughs> so, um, my back history is I was a vet tech and then I coached volleyball and I was, I went on maternity leave with twins and I wasn't a vet tech. So I was only a vet tech for 10 years, but I think that um, God had this in mind my whole life. Cause I often wondered why did I go to college to be a vet tech? And now I know why. And most of the volunteers there, they all have their niche, their passion, their careers. We have, it's always funny, the majority of them are like caretakers, you know, nurses, doctors. I mean, it's just funny, veterinarians, vet techs, crazy cat ladies. Oh, I mean, there's Chris. And the cool thing about um, if you have the passion, the, the desire, the drive to make a difference, the cool thing is the people that you meet because we all have the same passion and drive. And you know, when you get a bunch of ladies together, sometimes there can be drama. But you have to remember, guess what? We all love cats. We all love cats. And you work through it and it's a stepping stone. And, and I think it's kind of good to have um, little disagreements because you work through them and then you kind of you get a deeper bond with each other. Or you kill each other. Or Chris kills them. So uh, Jovi was only six, isn't that so cool? She like grew up here. So does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I can just walk around and show, if, you, if you're new to this, I can show what we have built. I'll be looking, Is, oh, you, can you see it now? Yeah, All right, so, so you'll notice that we have the litter boxes up high and that was planned. 
And look at Justin's rigging up a, what do you call that? New Year ball? It's our Times Square. Times Square. It's our ball drop for the cats. Is it full of catnip? Do you know what's in it? Oh, it's going to be fun to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> So this is our dream. It, I, I, last year this time, I was peering out the window wondering, will we be in our new sanctuary? I think I'm going to go look at our videos that we took last year. And we did not start going live until like, it was February or March. And I'll, I'll never forget the first time I went live. I, um, I, I logged in. And I just showed the cats and I didn't talk. And there was like 100 people watching in like two minutes. And I got chicken. And I, I think I said something and then I got off. I think my first live was like three minutes long. That was really scary. And we still try to focus on the cats. We like to show all, when we do lives now, we like to show the people now. It's okay, I don't know why I was so afraid. Like, I think I was afraid that we'd all turn into movie stars. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. You know, I just didn't, just want to make sure that the focus is on these cats. Because these cats came from horrible situations, you know. They, they weren't wanted. They were treated as rodents. And I hate the fact that there's so many unwanted, homeless, stray cats living outside in Minnesota that lose their ears. They lose their lies. They lose their paws. They lose their tails to frostbite. They freeze to death here in Minnesota. And it just breaks our hearts. Where's Will? Well, he was over there. <clears throat> Is he not on the top Will must have moved. Who's down in the bottom one? I see a gray one. Is that him? Oh, I think I see Will. Oh, he is? Yeah. He's eating? Yep. Oh, thank you, Roy. All right. Hi, hi Leona. There's Melissa. It's really cool to look at the old videos and see the cats and then see them here. It's so, oh, there's Mario, you guys. There's, up. Oh, see, he knows his name. All right, I'm still trying to find Will. Will ditched me. So, and when you run a rescue, when you run a sanctuary, you put your heart and soul in it. And um, you do the best that you can. So when people do, you know, well, I would do this and I would do that. We have to get better about ignoring that. It's easier said than done, let me tell you. You know, today was kind of a rough day with my back. And you walk in here and, and I just, I, we get so many pleas for help and people saying you've got space and how can, you, how can you sleep at night knowing that there's cats outside? Well, how can you? You know, I just want to say, do you want to come and volunteer? Because... It, it, it is a lot of work. Look at Chris's in shorts. She was in a bikini and I made her put clothes on. <laughs> Russ is like, what? <laughs> All right, I'll show you our catio. But isn't this magnificent? All these cats get along because they just get it. And it is those feral or those friendly cats that will upset our apple cart. I'm getting thicker skin, let me tell you. But you know, I, I was getting thick skin because there's a rescue or two in the state of Minnesota that do not like, they don't, they don't like furball. Uh, I work with all rescues. I will always work with rescues. We donate to rescues. I think rescues should all work together. Only conclusion is jealousy. And you can't have pride and you can't be jealous. We all have to work together and the only thing I can come up with and I'm sure I've told y'all I'm still being investigated by the Attorney General because that rescue had people file complaints with the Animal Humane Society against me so they came and investigated us and found out how wonderful we are then they did it to the Minnesota Board of Animal Health and they sent out lots of veterinarians and they all found out how wonderful we are so then this year they decided to go to the Attorney General and so we submitted all of our taxes from 2019 through 2022. 
Lori is our treasure. She had to get it all together. And so I cannot wait till we get the letter or I don't know how they end an investigation. I'm not sure how it ends, but it'll be a year in March. Clearly they haven't found anything because they, there is nothing. I mean, don't you guys see how much this building was? This building was over $300,000. Isn't that amazing? And the best part is, it's paid for. All right, let's go out to the catio. Chris doesn't have to do dishes when we go to Carboni's anymore. I miss it. All right, let's go outside. <clears throat> Ooh, somebody did a dookie because I can smell it. Pew! All right. Uh, I know. So that's so funny. Um, we'll have to do, we'll do another YouTube where the volunteers talk about how they um, started here. Legit, 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 legit. I thought Lori was a mole. Hi, Uncle Bruce. I really did. I thought she was from that rescue. The, they couldn't find nothing wrong with me, so I thought they sent a mole in to try to get some juice from the inside. And there's not any juice, but she's not a mole. And now she's our treasure. And, and Lori will be here too. She's gonna stay. Let's get this party started. Cause it is New Year's Eve. You know what, Sylvia? My brother-in-law, um, um, he worked for the Attorney General's office in some fashion, like in the um, building division or something. The in, he was a building inspector or something. But he, scary, scary, scary. He said the same thing. Um, why would the Attorney General want to, um, I don't know, take time from us caring from cats? I don't know. My husband was so angry about it that um, we sent our personal tax records too so that um, the Attorney General could see that the first well, first four years, my husband basically supported. We we paid no bills. We we couldn't. Uh, we couldn't. We. My husband paid for dentals. My husband paid for you know, veterinary expenses. So I, I know it'll end well. I'm excited. I just can't wait. So we are now out in the catio, and it doesn't feel bad. Wow, it's midnight. Happy New Year, in the UK. Happy New Year. So these cats can come outside anytime they want. Sorry about that. We have it wrapped so that the snow doesn't come in. And um, we don't ever close it. And sometimes it is below zero out here, but the cats can choose to come and go. I don't think there's anything anybody can do about the Attorney General. We just have to wait. They came back with 17 questions back in July, which Lori answered. Um, you know, and in and here's a funny one, and I know I've said it before, but do you know that one of the questions was, why did I write a check out to the Minnesota, um, Minnesota Department of Revenue? Because I pay sales tax on my cats because that's the law. Isn't that funny? Why would the Attorney General have to ask why I wrote a check out to the Minnesota Department of Revenue? That's when I think they're just messing with me. <clears throat> so, wow, summer, I'm so jealous. It is thirty six out on the catio, which we you know it's it's winter time, so we're happy with thirty six out here. So uh, Lori and Hannah and Chris and Betsy and Justin and Jolene and Casey got sick, so he's not um, here. Trying to think of um, oh Jessica and Jolene or Jessica and Jovi. They are all gonna for sure stay till um, they're gonna stay until midnight. So, uh, Darlene, that was um, very interesting that you said that because I was kind of thinking that Darlene had said something where it takes two in incomes to run a rescue sanctuary. <clears throat> I am so lucky that I did not have to work. I had to stop coaching volleyball because that's what I did. I was a vet tech for 10 years. I have five kids and when my twins, when I was due with my twins, I had to go on maternity leave and I didn't go back and I started coaching volleyball. And 
I just got caught up in, in fostering for Last Hope and coaching volleyball. I am very lucky and blessed in that I could quit my volleyball job and just be with the cats because for the first two years, the holidays, it was me, myself, and I. I remember Jessica and Jovi would try to come on the holidays as best as they can. Um, and remember, I was dealing with a family member that was addicted. And um, I remember some holidays being by myself, surrounded with the cats, crying. You know, I'm with the, all these cats, and I, I don't have much help. And, you know, but you have to go through all that. You know, you have to struggle and be uncomfortable to make change. And I just... I, you know, like when, when, when Keith Streif from the Animal Humane Society, when he came out to investigate me with his two um, investigators, when they, they pounded on the door and showed me the badge, scared the crap out of me. <clears throat> um, it made me uncomfortable, and, but it made me stronger. And it made me start doing videos. Because I, you know, and I know this is, this sounds silly, but the, uh, Toby Keith, how do you like me now? Pops in my mind all the time. To that one rescue who I just looked, they don't have very many followers compared to us. And I just want to sing, how do you like me now? Now that I'm on my way, you know, because they tried to take me down. So karma, if you, if you truly do things for the um, right reasons and not to benefit yourself, you, you're going to be okay. So... So I'm very proud of, of what we did as a team. So let's go see what they're doing in the kitchen. And then I'll, they'll probably go on Facebook or I'll probably do a quick Instagram because I'm going to go home and watch their party from home. My back is sore and I think I just need to go lay and let my back rest. Isn't this amazing, you guys? Oh, my gosh. Please go back to our old videos. And I think we started doing them in 20, December of 2016. And the videos are amazing to watch. They are amazing. I remember a Super Bowl one watching Jovi <laughs> with Super Bowl. Let's see who's all joined our party. Are you coming in to see what we're doing? Yes. <laughs> oh, there's Christian. He's our builder. Ooh, look at this. Look at the spread we have. So we are going to celebrate Furball Farm 2023. Next year, we're getting the fence. Next year, we're getting the fence. That's our next goal. We are going to have a huge fenced-in area um, for the cats to go play, and we'll have a ceiling so they can't get out. So don't be worried. Who's glamping? It's always Renee. Our new glamper is being fixed. I guess the purple one is missing a piece or something. So, all right. So that's, in a nutshell, that is the story of Furball. If you ever have any questions, don't hesitate to email us. Uh, we try to answer our emails within two days. Um, and please be patient, because look at all the wonderful, beautiful, lucky cats that Furball Farm is taking care of. And Christian is going to be building custom-made, durable cat furniture for us. All right. Thank you for watching, and we hope everybody has a wonderful 2023. And if you're watching this and it's 2023 or it's 2024. <laughs> you drank too much. Yeah, yeah, you drank too much. All right. Thanks for watching. Tune in to Instagram and Facebook because we are going to be going there all night long. And TikTok. and TikTok. Oh my gosh. And TikTok. I forgot. All right. TikTok's probably next. Do it again. All right. Happy New Year!